Brought to you by PrayLatin.com, makers of prayer cards featuring complete English phonetic renderings of Latin pronunciations. First, I want to say that this is actually Anthony Stein. My voice might sound off today, and I have been hit with something that's temporarily impacted the sound of my voice, so please keep me in your prayers. That having been said, the show must go on, and we have a disturbing rumor coming out of the Roman Curia that was given to me by someone who would be in the know. Francis has his sequel to Traditionis Custodis in the, in the works, with a release schedule of Ash Wednesday. That's not surprising, and we even have some vague details about what it will cover. Though from past action, we can take an educated guess as to what Francis will do next to destroy sacred tradition in the church. At the same time, however, we have a formal statement from the SSPX on Rome's attempt to destroy sacred tradition and the resistance to it. It's a blunt document that asks some tough questions of the groups that are similar to the SSPX and their dedication to tradition, but have a recognized relationship with Rome, rather than the canonical messy situation that the SSPX have been in for now 50 years. I'll go over both of those stories today because they are intertwined. Let's start with the rumor from Rome. My source has this information for us. The Congregation for Divine Worship, on behalf of Francis the Merciful One, has a document in the works coming out that will be released on Ash Wednesday, and it's aimed squarely at for what gets called former Ecclesia Dei Institutes, like the FSSP, and Institute of Christ the King, among other such groups. If you don't know what Ecclesia Dei was, it was a Vatican office that oversaw the groups like the FSSP and the rest for Rome. It was founded off of the document Ecclesia Dei of 1988, which was the Vatican's formal and rather questionable response to the SSPX and the actions taken by Archbishop Lefebvre to preserve the traditions of the Church that at Rome had been trying to bury since Paul VI released his new rite of Mass and his questionable revision of the sacraments. Out of this document was born the FSSP, the Institute of Christ the King Sovereign Priest, the Institute of the Good Shepherd, and numerous others, and they all fell under this new office bearing the name of the Modu Proprio Ecclesia Dei. That office was ended by Francis within the past two years, which most of the commentators in the traditional Catholic world reported on when it happened, and warned that this was probably not a good sign, and it turned out not to be a good thing at all. That office was abolished, and the present mess of the slow ending of these groups began in earnest. The rumor out of Rome is that on Ash Wednesday, Francis, through his hireling, Archbishop Roach, will release a document aimed at making the life of these groups miserable. We don't know the details of it yet, but we can hazard a safe guess that Cardinal Supich's recent restriction of the traditional liturgy and preconciliar form of the sacraments gives us an idea of at least the very bare minimum of what this will do. Supich's policy explicitly banning the use of older form of the sacraments such as confirmation, baptism, extreme unction, ordination, and marriage. In addition, that policy did the following, quote, Under the policy, which takes effect January 25th, Priests, deacons, and ordained ministers who wish to use the quote-unquote old rite must submit their request to Cardinal Supich in writing and agree to abide by the new norms. Those rules specify that the traditional Latin masses must incorporate scripture readings in the vernacular using the official translation of the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops. In addition, such masses cannot take place in a parish church unless both the Archbishop and the Vatican agree to grant an exemption. The new policy also prohibits the celebration of traditional Latin masses on the first Sunday of every month. Christmas, the Tritium, Easter Sunday, and Pentecost Sunday, end quote. Now that was an excerpt from the National Catholic Register's reporting on the document, which I've gone over in detail before, and I don't think it's necessary to rehash here. That is what we can expect at the barest minimum. A requirement that the FSSP can celebrate the Novus Ordo with the local bishop is also just logical, if you're, you know, thinking the way the modernists think about these things. And here's the thing. Many of the priests of the FSSP and the rest of those groups will absolutely refuse to do so. And I know this because I've heard many of the FSSP priests say this in person. I've heard them say this. They will not say the new mass. But again, these likely policies in this forthcoming document on Ash Wednesday, which is not that far from now, are the barest minimum. I won't speculate on anything else at this moment. I just know this. Most of us got wrong what Traditionis Custodis was going to contain because we couldn't envision the cruelty of the heretics in Rome in fashioning their policy. They went far beyond anything we expected. What else should we expect? I don't really know, but this brings me to this. At the same time as the emergence of this rumor from Rome, the Society of St. Pius X released its official response to the responses at Dubia of Archbishop Roach and, more broadly, to the 
response to traditionalist custodis coming from certain groups. And in it, they pose a series of questions to the groups I've reported on thus far, including the Benedictines of the Immaculate, whom I reported on just yesterday. The response of the SSPX I have for you now and in full, it's relatively short. Reactions to the Modu Proprio Traditionis Custodis, dated 7th of January, 2022. In recent days, certain Ecclesia Dei Institutes have formulated somewhat incisive reactions on the Modu Proprio of Pope Francis, who has clearly set himself the goal of eliminating the use of the Tridentine Liturgy, especially considering the application given by Bishop Roach, along with the interview he gave to Edward Penton. The disappearance is aimed both directly by important limitations of the previous use allowed by the Samorum Pontificum, as well as indirectly by suppressing the use of the Rituale Romanum and the Pontificale Romanum, as the Bishop Arthur Roach explained to Mr. Penton. This means in particular that the Sacrament of Confirmation must henceforth be done under its reformed form, and that ordinations will be conferred according to the new pontifical. This point also concerns the so-called Ecclesia Dei societies, which seek to stand behind their own right to remain unaffected by these transformations. But that is not the case, as Monsignor Roach clarified. Faced with this state of formal notice, certain superiors or certain priests have begun to react a little more vigorously. Thus, Father Louis-Marie de Bliniers of the Fraternity of St. Vincent Ferrer affirms that obedience has limits, but when it comes to knowing what measures could be taken, he claims to rely on a double fidelity. Quote, Never to go beyond hierarchical communion with the Pope and the bishops. Never abandon the sacred heritage which is our joy and pr procures the salvation of so many faithful. <laughs> End quote. As for Father Guillaume de Tanoirn of the Institute of the Good Shepherd, if he resolutely affirms that it is necessary to choose Samorum Pontificum against Traditionis Custodis, and if he shows the obvious weakness of this last document, then we must look to the question he was asked recently. Quote, Do you think that the ex Ecclesia Dei communities are ready to resist? He replies, In any case, it is clear that they are playing for their very existence. End quote. Finally, Mr. Yehan de Belleville, founder of the Benedictines of the Immaculate, reaffirms, as indeed have other institutes before him, his attachment to his constitutions which specify the exclusive use of the Tridentine Rite, and according to a custom since the foundation, that of the old Rituale and Pontificale. But will this affirmation have any value when the bishop in charge of ordinations wishes to use the Reformed Rite, or when he proceeds to the administration of the Sacrament of Confirmation according to the Rite of 1971? What principle can these societies and these priests invoke to stand up against a general law that the Pope is determined to impose by removing, if necessary, the concessions or specific exemptions that were given by his predecessors? If it is just a simple preference, how can they maintain it against the will of the Pope? How can they justify an opposition on such fragile bases? The coming months will show the extent of the difficulties these communities will have to endure. They will also show how far they are ready to go to defend the traditional liturgy and to denounce the reform that Rome is gradually imposing on them. The question posed by the SSPX is pretty simple. You cannot resist the actions of the Pope in this regard if your defense of the Latin Mass and preconciliar form of the sacraments is based only on mere preference. The SSPX position is based on a preference for the Latin Mass, but it goes well beyond that. It is based on an observation that what the Catholic world watched was the triumph of modernism, which included changing virtually everything in the Church, and included embracing positions on various hot-button issues that the Church had formally condemned in the past. In other words, their position is not really one of preference, but one of defending and preserving the faith. If the groups they mentioned and the FSSP and the rest do to the forthcoming document base everything on a mere preference for the traditional liturgy, on mere preference, then they have no ground to stand on in resisting the Pope. This has to come with accepting that there have been bigger problems in the Church than just the liturgy, and that the changes in the liturgy and the sacraments reflect the bigger changes to the faith and to the relationship of the Church to the world since the Council. And it's a good question. I'm going to pose it to everyone. If we defend the Latin Mass out of mere preference for it, for the smells and bells and beauty of the liturgy that was stripped out of the new Mass, then we don't have a leg to stand on. We must recognize that the problems in the Church run much deeper than that and they go back much, much further than Francis. During and after the Council, in its implementation stage, everything was redefined and virtually everything was changed. And this is what hardline traditionalists have been saying for decades now. Now recently, Dr. Taylor Marshall posed this question on Twitter, and I'll echo it here. Quote, 
After Vatican II, they changed all seven sacraments, including Mass and the calendar. Here is a question we need to ask. Why was it necessary to change everything? I'd love to hear a Vatican II advocate explain, here is why we needed to change everything. Why was it necessary to change the liturgy for baptism? Why was the old baptismal rite broken? Is the new baptism rite better? End quote. The form of the sacraments was altered after the council, with the exorcisms and the rite of baptism removed, and many of the blessings in the nuptial rite removed as well. In the Mass, only about 7% of the pre-conciliar Mass exists unaltered in the new Mass, according to a recent study I saw. These problems go well beyond the liturgy, and it is time we as laity accept that, and it is time for the priests of the various religious orders and priestly fraternities to begin to wrestle with that and its, implement, its implications. Now, what did you think of the SSPX statement? What do you think is coming next from Rome on Ash Wednesday? Remember, it was on the Feast of Our Lady of Mount Carmel that Traditionus Custodis was released, and it was on an Ember Day that Roach released his response to a dubia that didn't exist. And it was about as close to Christmas as possible that Cardinal Supic restricted the sacraments and the Mass in his diocese. The modernists love hitting us on feast days and on solemn observations, and it would be fitting for them to restrict the Latin Mass societies on Ash Wednesday, for we should be putting on sackcloth and ash in response to their actions. Most of us haven't, though. Including myself, really. At least insufficiently. But let me know what you thought of this in the comments, please. Like and subscribe if you haven't. It really does help. And as always, pray for the Church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.